This week on TGC News, Smith & Wesson resurrects a Magnum. Federal gets shorty and tracking gun recoil on your phone is now a thing. You know, guys, I've been thinking about getting a hybrid lately. No, not the kind of hybrid you're thinking. The handmade in the USA kind of hybrid with leather and Kydex. The kind that is available for just about every popular handgun on the planet. The kind that's comfortable when you put it on and comfortable all day, even if you're a big guy. I might need a belt to go with it too. Crossbreed holsters will definitely check those boxes. And if you use the code TGC15 over at crossbreedholsters.com, you'll get a whopping 15% off your entire order. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Shout out to Izzy, the editor who works his butt off every single week to get all of the TGC videos done. Thank you, Izzy, for being a man of the people. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Now, the news. First up this week, a resurrected classic from Smith & Wesson. The 648 was originally introduced in 1989, and from what I could find, production was halted somewhere around 2005-2006. It was said that the gun was very accurate and very nice to shoot. Now, how about some specs on the new version? It's a six inch barrel 22 Magnum made of stainless steel. Unlike the old version of the gun, which only held six rounds, the new ones hold eight. Side note for some of the newer gun guys out there, if you see a number six in front of a Smith & Wesson revolver model number like 686, or in this case 648, that indicates that the gun is the stainless kind of silver look instead of the dark blued coloring. The sights on the 648 are pretty standard. Adjustable rear, black front, rubber grips, double action, single action, blah, 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 blah. Very similar to the other full-size Smith wheel guns. The thing that comes to mind when I see them reintroducing this gun is the type of customer asking for it. The gun market is kind of weird right now. You can't go into any gun store without tripping over ARs, and it seems like everyone is focused on the next concealed carry gun with or without optic cut. You also have another subsection that's really into precision bolt guns right now. My point is that it takes a special kind of person to say, you know what, I want a 22 caliber projectile, but I want to pay more for the ammo. Sure, you get more velocity and in most cases better bullet design, but is anyone really like hunting with these? And then I start to think of the reason that gun culture is so wonderful to begin with. It's not always about market share and the things that are economically intelligent. I mean, I own a bunch of stupid guns on purpose. And I think the 648 kind of falls into the category of, I just want that for some people. The price on the new 22 Magnum 648 comes in at 749 MSRP. I want to know what you guys think. Are you the kind of shooter to buy guns just because maybe you think they're cool or something like that? Or do they have to have a specific purpose for you to pull the trigger? Pun intended. Sound off in the comments and let's talk about it. Next up this week, Federal has released a new shotgun shell line. And now that you've all let out a collective, <sighs> I'll tell you that these are actually pretty cool. They're called shorty shells, and they're adorable little 12-gauge shells in a few varieties. Number four buck, which has a muzzle velocity of 1,200 feet per second, a one-ounce rifled slug going 1,200 FPS, and then a number eight shot version going 1,145 feet per second. Two things come to mind after running through those specifications. All of those, even though they are a full inch shorter, have the same performance as the standard length shell. And then I start to think about the uses for such a product. In theory, you can fit way more shells into the tube of a pump shotgun if they take up less space, and if they perform the same, you win. However, it's a theory because shotguns like the Mossbergs and Remingtons kind of have trouble feeding these shorter shells. They're actually designed specifically for two and three quarter and three inch shells most of the time. Can you imagine how nice it would be to have one of those little shock waves with something like nine rounds in the tube instead of five? I don't know if that's 
the actual amount. I'm just trying to make a point here. It would be cool if that worked. Maybe more tiny shotgun shells being available will make the shotgun brands come up with ways to make them cycle properly. Maybe, oh my God, a new design. Oh my God, innovation. <laughs> Let's try it. The downside, the slug and buck cost about $1.20 per round and the eight shot, the bird shot stuff, which normally is around 25 cents a round for the full size shell, comes out to be 60 cents a shot. So a good amount more expensive. Let's get into some rapid fire. A company you might be familiar with called Mantis has come out with one of the most interesting training tools I've seen in a long time. It's called the X10 Elite and it's the latest version of their gun tracking system. The long and short of this is that you attach a sensor to your gun and using telemetry and magic, you get a graphical readout on your phone, on their app of how you're performing. It measures things like movement under trigger pull, like your muzzle position and how much you're dipping when you're pulling the trigger, how fast you're moving, and now it measures recoil and holster draw. I've tried the older versions at trade shows and really enjoyed them, so I have high expectations for this new version. Pricing is set at $249.99, and if it actually helps, that might be worth it. American Tactical Imports, also known as ATI, has introduced a new AR-style shotgun to the market. It's called the Millsport 410 shotgun. Long story short, it's chambered in 410, has a five-round mag, and looks just like an AR-15. You may be familiar with their Omni shotgun, and this is essentially the same thing, but with forged receivers and a higher price tag. Going from polymer to forged receivers will cost you an extra 100 bucks with an MSRP of $719.95. Sig Sauer has introduced a new line of ammo called Elite Hunter Tipped Ammunition. The name pretty much gives away the intent. It's available in eight different calibers, including 243, 308, and 300 Win Mag, the Creed Moors, and a few others. The idea here is that the tip, much like every other tipped bullet, helps flight stability as well as chambering consistency, and most importantly, consistent expansion when entering a flesh target. Pricing starts at $36.95 a box. Raise your hand if you wanna see us test that stuff in some ballistics jail. Have you ever tried to put a gun together with this or these? Or maybe this, or maybe even this? <laughs> maybe it's time to consider getting some schooling from Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI offers courses from some of the best and brightest the gun industry has to offer. From gunsmithing to reloading to full-on associate's degrees in firearms technology, you can learn all of that from the comfort of your own home. To learn more, head over to sdi.edu. And now, as you guys requested, more Patton's Armory. This is a segment where I grab one of my personal guns and tell you guys about it. This is lovingly known as the Chaos Carbine. This is the second AR that I ever assembled, and uh, it, it holds a special place in my heart because I've shot it a ton. I've shot this gun, I think it's probably got 12, 13,000 rounds through the barrel. Let me run through the parts real quick. It's got a VG6 break out front with their kind of birdcage thing, a Daniel Defense barrel, A2 sight. This is an AB Arms forend. Despite the weird looks, it's actually really comfortable. I kind of grab it around the front end, right, like that. Super nice. I actually like that. It's actually a piston gun. It has an Osprey Defense piston system in here, which I love, has never given me a problem. I think this is a DPMS upper. I'm not sure it's slick side just something I decided to go with. It's got a polymer lower. This is a lower from a company called Plum Crazy. You never see them around because they don't exist anymore. Inside, <laughs> this is a funny story, the original hammer broke one time when I was dry firing it uh, because it was made out of plastic and I replaced it with a Geisley Super Dynamic 3 gun. Talk about going from zero to hero. This is a really, really fast trigger, one of my favorites ever. I don't know what charging handle this is. It's got a no longer existing company's rear sight that goes like this. It kind of rotates like from vertical to 45 degrees both ways. Magpul stock out back. Got a fab defense grip because I like finger grooves and that's it. This thing has been with me for a long time, been through a lot of life with me and still keeps on ticking. It weighs in and I think 
two pounds. So it's a lightweight piston gun and it runs really, really well. And I absolutely love it. And that is it for this week's show, guys. You know what to do. If you didn't like it, hit that button. But if you did like it, hit this one, get subscribed and consider supporting us via the links in the video description. I would really appreciate it if you did that. Be sure to tune into our podcast live on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Shout out to, I didn't rewrite this shout out part. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, 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 damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.